Hi, and welcome to Horror Recapped. Today we'll be discussing the 2004 psychological horror film titled Calvair. Beware, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man looking at himself in a mirror while he puts on makeup. He goes on stage in a retirement home and performs. His name is Mark Stevens. After he finishes his performance, he goes to his dressing room to change. Mark is soon joined by Madame Langhoff. She walks toward him and mentions how she enjoyed his performance. She takes his hand and places it on her body. Mark is quick to remove his hands. She leaves the room with her head down. Mark is ready to leave and he talks to Mademoiselle Vicky. She hands him an envelope and he walks toward the door of his van. She calls out to him, sounding almost desperate. She gets in front of him and asks for a hug. She hugs him and he looks up, only to see Madame Langhoff staring at them. He enters the car and tries to start the engine as Mademoiselle Vicky stares at him intensely. He drives off and enters a fog. He stops the van and checks his map to know his location. There is a storm and Mark's van breaks down during the storm. He is stranded deep in the woods, unaware of his location. He sees a sign for an inn and gets back into his van. He turns and finds an emaciated young man staring at him from the window. His name is Boris, a local in the area. He asks Mark if he saw his missing dog. He adds that it's a big dog with short hair. Boris asks if he had seen the direction his dog went. Mark tells him he saw someone moving forward. Boris moves in that direction and calls out the name of his dog, Bella. Mark gets down from the van and asks Boris for the direction to the inn whose side he saw. Boris tells him the inn is far away. Mark replies that he only needs the direction to the inn. Boris decides to take Mark to the inn but tells him to be quiet so he could hear Bella. Mark hurries to kill the engine and lock the doors to his van. Following Boris, they continue to walk until they get to the inn. Boris calls out the name, Mr. Bartell. Lights appear in one of the rooms and Mr. Bartell looks out from the window. Boris says, I have brought someone for you, turning to Mark and telling him Mr. Bartell would come down and open the door for him. Boris sees Mr. Bartell and tells him he brought someone for him, adding he wants a room. He runs back leaving Mark with Bartell. Bartell tells Mark nobody has been to the inn for a while, but the rooms are still clean. Mark enters the room and lays on the bed to sleep. He wakes up the next morning to the noise of an engine sound and looks out the window to see his van being towed by Bartell. He rushes down to meet Bartell and Boris. Bartell asks him how his night went, and he replies, very fine, thank you. Bartell says he took the liberty of towing his van. He adds that he is very handy with cars and was glad he could be of help. Bartell tells him he saw the sign on his van and that he too was also a performer, a retired stand-up comedian, which makes them colleagues. He adds, once a performer, always a performer. He calls his mechanic, but is informed by the mechanic's wife that he was working off-premises and would be busy all day. He ends the call and tells Mark not to worry, stating that he is handy with cars and would take a look. Mark looks unsatisfied, and Bartell asks what's the hurry. Mark mentions he has a long way to drive. Bartell asks where he is going, and he replies to the South to perform a Christmas special. Bartell tells him he has two days, adding that performances must recharge their batteries. He continues to say a little rest would be good. Mark accepts this. Bartell walks forward, puts his hand on Mark's shoulders, and tells him he would make a nice breakfast and then look at his van. While he eats his breakfast, Mark hears noises and looks out the window. He sees Bartell working on his van. He steps out of the inn and walks towards Bartell. Mark asks if he can help. Bartell is quick to reply no, telling him to just relax. Mark is relieved and tells him that he is going to take a little walk. Bartell becomes paranoid and says, let me give you some advice, don't go down to the village. Curious, Mark asks why not. Bartell replies saying that those people are not like you and me, adding that they are not performers, so be kind enough not to go. He moves forward to take his walk. Bartell tells him to be careful and says that the paths are slippery at this time of year. Bartell checks to see if Mark has left and begins to go through his van. 
He takes Mark's mobile phone. Mark hears his voices on a nearby farm and moves closer to see what is happening. He gets to the farm and sees men watching a teenage boy with a pig while the pig is being held down. They stated that the experience was so tender. Mark rushes back to the inn and meets Bartell on a call. Once done with the call, Bartell asks Mark how his walk went, and he replies saying it is a beautiful region. Suspicious, Bartell asks him if he went down to the village, and he replies no, just walked around. He asks for an update on the van. Bartell tells him he had trouble with the van and thinks the fault is the battery. He tells Mark that he spoke to the mechanic's wife and it can be fixed but not before tomorrow. Mark leaves the inn to try and start the van but is stopped by Bartell who calls his name repeatedly. He tells Mark to wait and continues to tell him that the van won't start. He adds that he spent all morning working on it and he understands how he feels. He promises to make Mark dinner and lures him back into the inn. While he has his dinner, Bartell tells Mark about his wife Gloria. Mark immediately asks if he was married. Bartell mentions that she left him, adding that she was also a singer and he was happy when she was around. That night, Bartell insists that Mark sing him a song before going to bed. He wakes up the next morning to find no one in the inn. He tries to use Bartell's phone to make a call but discovers that it is not connected. He searches the inn for Bartel and finds the pornographic photographs given to him by Mademoiselle Vicky. Bartel walks in and Mark is frightened. He goes to his room and sees Bartel breaking his van's glass and also pouring petrol around the van. Bartel thinks Mark is Gloria, his wife who left him. He knocks Mark unconscious. Bartel ties Mark and dresses him in his wife's clothes. He also cuts Mark's hair and states that he is trying to protect him. Bartell ties Mark to the tractor and takes him to the forest so he could cut down the Christmas tree. Mark manages to escape and runs but is caught by a trap set for small animals. Boris finds Mark and he begs him for help but Boris ignores him and addresses him as if he is his lost dog, petting him on the head. Tired of this, Mark bites Boris's leg and he runs away. The next morning, he returns with Bartel and drives him back to the inn. He is spotted by two locals and followed. Bartel ties Mark to a cross and nails his left hand like he is being crucified. Boris returns with a calf, convinced that it is his lost dog. Suddenly, a gunshot explodes through the window, killing Boris. This is done by the villagers. Their goal is to reclaim the calf and manages to escape into the forest. He spends the night running in the forest until he comes across a crucified Christ gravestone in a cemetery. Mark manages to escape, but one of the locals continues to chase him, but falls into a bog. As he is being swallowed by the bog, a broken Mark watches as the man sinks into the ground. And that's a wrap for Calvair. Let's know your thoughts in the comments section. If you would like to look into other movies with us, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss a single video. Thanks for watching.